by the end of this video, you'll have a solid understanding of the line command in Fusion 360. Hey there, it's Kevin Kennedy, and welcome to the Product Design Online YouTube channel, where I demo all things Fusion 360. If you're new here, be sure to hit that red subscribe button and go ahead and comment below and let me know what you plan on using Fusion 360 for. The line tool is one of the most common sketch tools in any CAD program, and that's why there are so many ways to access the line tool. The line tool can be accessed from the sketch dropdown list in the model, sculpt, and patch workspaces. You'll also notice that the Fusion engineers have given the line tool the keyboard shortcut letter L because it is so frequently used. Additionally, you can use the right click menu. The line tool is under the sketch category, or if you use the marking menu, you can click sketch and quickly drag your cursor down through the line tool, clicking again to activate it. With the line command active, you can draw a line on any sketch plane or surface of a 3D model. Lines can be drawn between any two points at any length or angle needed. I'll click on an origin plane to demo drawing some lines. To start any line, you'll have to click the first point. As I drag my mouse cursor around, you'll notice that it can snap into the origin point or any of the grid elements. Now, if your lines aren't wanting to snap into the grid, you'll want to make sure you have the snap to grid turned on in the grids and snap settings down below. I'll click once on the origin point, and as I drag my mouse cursor out, you'll see two numerical input boxes appear. The first input box is the length of the line, and the second input box is the angle of the line. If I type out 30 millimeters and move my mouse even the slightest bit, you'll notice that the dimensions change. To stop this from happening, you'll want to hit the tab key after filling out one of these input boxes. I'll type out 30 millimeters again, followed by the tab key. If you look closely, you'll see that the lock icon now appears, and I can move my mouse cursor around without having to worry about the dimensions getting messed up. Now I can either click to set the second point of the line, or I can type out a degree in the degree input box. I'll go ahead and click at zero degrees, creating a horizontal line. Now there are two important things to take note of. First off, you'll notice a horizontal constraint was automatically applied to the line. Now if you're not familiar with line constraints, then you'll want to check out the line constraint video that I'll link to down below in the video description. Second, you'll notice that once you click the second point of a line, the line command is still active, which means that I can click again to place another line, and so on. To leave the line command, you can either select the check mark, hit the escape key on your keyboard, or you can activate another command by selecting its keyboard shortcut or by selecting another command from one of the drop down menus. I'll hit the keyboard shortcut letter L again to activate the line command. You'll notice I can start a line at the end of a previously created line by clicking on its endpoint. And I'll just click again to set the second point of the line. With the line command, you can also create arcs. I'll hit the escape key to exit the line command, and then I'll hit the keyboard shortcut letter L to activate it once again. This time, I'll click on the endpoint of a previous line, and while holding down the left mouse button, I will drag the cursor around without letting go of the mouse button. You'll notice as I drag my mouse cursor around, the line turns into an arc, and I can move it to either side. I'll go ahead and click on the first point of the initial line that I created. This turns the shape orange, signifying that the shape is a closed profile which means that all endpoints of the sketch geometry are connected. It's also important to note the color of the lines. Almost all of the lines here are blue because they are not fully defined. This means that I can drag them around by selecting them and moving them. However, 
you'll notice that the first line is black, which means it's fully defined. The first line has a horizontal constraint and a dimension applied to it, ensuring that it can't be moved anywhere. As you can imagine, making your sketches fully constrained is an important part of mastering Fusion 360 or really any CAD program. If you're not familiar with this concept, then be sure to check out the video that I'll link to in the description below. The last concept I'll cover in this video is construction lines. First, I'll create a few lines to divide up this sketch profile. You'll notice as I hover my mouse around that each shape is now highlighted on an individual basis. Now, there may be times you'll need to draw lines in sketches to help dimension or drive the shape or size of the sketch. And this is where construction lines come in. If I wanted these inner lines to help drive the sketch without segmenting the overall profile, then I would want to change these lines to construction lines. To do so, simply hold down the shift key and select all the lines that you want to change. Then you can hit the keyboard shortcut letter X or select construction in the sketch dialog box. You'll notice that construction lines are signified by dashed lines. I'll go ahead and add a dimension to one of these construction lines so it changes the overall size of the profile. Now if I hover over the profile shape again, you'll notice it highlights the whole profile shape like it originally did. If you want to create construction lines from the start, you can make sure that it's activated in the dialog box before drawing any lines. You can also revert construction lines back to regular lines by selecting them and hitting the keyboard shortcut letter X, or of course by turning it off in the sketch dialog box. In summary, sketching lines is an important part of any CAD program, which is why the line tool can be activated in so many different places. You can create construction lines to further control sketch geometry without segmenting any profiles. To take full control of your sketches, you'll want to fully understand the power and the benefit of fully constraining and dimensioning your sketches. Thanks for watching. If you have any questions at all about this tutorial or Fusion 360 questions in general, then be sure to comment them below. Hit that thumbs up icon if you learned something in this video and click subscribe followed by that little bell icon to be notified of more Fusion 360 tutorials.